Hey, bikers, what's up, my guys and girls and anybody else? Yeah, because, you know, might have some aliens watching. I mean, it's only fair because today I am reviewing the Doctor Who premiere stories. So that's episodes 1201 and 1202 called Spy Falls, part one and part two. Uh, this is Chris Chibnall and Jodie Whittaker's sophomore season. And hopefully it goes better than their first season. Was not... Wasn't my doctor. Well, Jody's fine. The writing was not my doctor. But that's enough on that. It's a new season. Um, hopefully, I, I'm, I'm going into this. I don't really know what to expect. Um, the only thing, like, I, I just hope it's not... It, it's more like Doctor Who that I'm used to. So, without further ado, let's go into the first part of this Spyfall, which was our premiere, came out uh, on New Year's. And so, yeah, I guess the first thing I want to talk about, and it's truthfully my favorite part of Doctor Who right now, is the theme by Sega Nakanola. Love it. Use it as my alarm occasionally. But also the new kind of like heartbeat, Rorschach, time vortex titles that we get super awesome super fresh gotta love it can't hate it i mean sure i also loved capaldi's clock vibe that was also cool so uh i'm gonna actually start off with a compliment to chris chibnall which was very rare for me last year even though i didn't record any episodes but him and his director jamie magnus stone did a fantastic job of infusing the spy genre into Doctor Who. And by the way, I, 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 I can't waste any time here. Finally, this episode feels like Doctor Who again. And I... Oh, it makes my nerd heart happy. Oh, and now for some shock. So apparently this whole... How they got it into being spy and everything involves mi6 because both torchwood and unit have been dissolved torchwood we knew was gone but unit that's a real shock to me because they were in capaldi's last season so that's like what three years ago now but back to the uh back to the show one thing that chibnall has done very well is that he hasn't been like stephen moffat re reusing the same three Doctor Who villains or races in everything. I'm looking at you, Weeping Angels, Daleks, and Cybermen. Daleks I'm fine with because it's the Daleks. We need the Daleks, but Weeping Angels came onto the scene great. Lasted great. And then wasn't really that great in the Capaldi years. It started getting old. I'm just I'm just gonna say. So the fact that Chibnall has been introducing new races, new aliens, and everything that, other than those guys last season with the teeth all over them, ugh, wasn't a fan of that. But this new whatever species they are that are just like cosmic entities, totally on board with it, super fun, super cool. I mean, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm really down for it. And also the fact that our big bad as far as we know as far as we like i guess it's the only thing we can call a big bad at this point daniel barton seven percent of his dna is non-human now I, I it doesn't you don't have to be a time lord here to be pretty certain that that seven percent is probably whatever this new alien species is i mean they did have a very cozy scene in his office where he was like, I know you're there, but meanwhile, all everybody was kind of like, oh, I guess he's talking to Ryan and Yaz, but it wasn't. He wasn't talking to them. He didn't know they were there. He was talking about the uh, new whatever they're called. Also, not a fan of the three companions. Two at most. I mean, I get it. It's kind of nice having the third one in there because then you have two teams of two, but it's just... It's a lot of extra characters you got to make sure you cover. And I think that was part of the downfall of the last of season 11 was just too many characters. And it was all too much character driven and not enough monster driven, which it seems like this new season is going to be correcting because there's two things that Doctor Who is best at. 
when it's dark as all hell, and when there's monsters. <gasps> Chris Chibnall, <laughs> I've given you plenty of compliments so far. This, I give you the most compliment for. I had no freaking idea, man. But, like, holy motherfucking shit. You actually heard that we were very upset about this not being our Doctor Who anymore. So, uh, you, you heard us, and you brought, you brought it back in a big way by reintroducing the Master, which is something I did not see at all. I never would have predicted that. I mean, we had him, we had the doc, we had, <laughs> we had the master with Tenet, but we didn't have it with Smith. Then we had it with Capaldi. So I thought maybe the trend would continue and we would skip it for Whitaker and maybe then whoever the next doctor is would be, we would have the master back again. Especially after how magnificent Michelle Gomez as Missy was. Amazing. But more than just that, the way Missy died in Capaldi's final episode. With John Sim coming back and killing his future incarnation, I, I did. I just never. I mean, of course, it's the master. The master finds a way to always be back. I mean, we saw it with the third Doctor and the fourth Doctor, like so. It's really so. I guess it's not much of a surprise, but at the same time, with how modern Who has been doing it, I wasn't expecting to see the master this time around. But. Dude, you did a great job. Um and, and the actor playing him, I, I really really sold the <laughs> I'm a maniac. It was amazing. I'm very excited for this master. Um it's going to be cool. But then he said something that I don't I'm not on board with. Okay, well maybe it's not so much that I'm not on board with it. But I'm very nervous about. And that's that the master told the doctor right before he left that everything you know is a lie. Chris Chibnall did a lot of retconning in that first season. So I'm a little concerned that now he's going to use the master as his modal, as his vehicle for retconning more of the doctor's history to fit how he wants the doctor to be now. I don't know what that's going to lead to. It's something with the Gal with Gallifrey, it seems like, because he was talking a lot about home and everything they taught us is a lie. But if there is no retconning inv involved, I'm going to be very on board with it because I think it's going to be super fun. There's also one other thing I do want from you, Chris. I'd like an ex explanation for how the Master is back again. Yeah, so I I'm, just, I'm just very curious how this is coming about. Like... Sim killing his future self to then end it so that no master ever could come again and not be and could not be a friend of the doctors. And in general, like, yeah, so I'll talk more about this in the next part, actually. The episode before the reveal of the master was great in of itself. But the master was masterful. He was masterful. It, it, it jumped the episode up by a lot and it was wonderful. So, um, yeah. Very excited, uh, and I think uh, it's about time we go on to episode two. So, without further ado, episode two was not as good, in my opinion, as episode one, but was still good. Still good. My, I think one of my major critiques of episode two would be that they lost a lot of the spy influence. That kind of came and went, and they were done with it. Yeah, it wasn't as good, but still okay. So, oh well, wasn't as great, but was still good. That being said, it started off with something that I just, I didn't like. Plain off. And I, you start off on a bad note that kind of just ruins the rest of the episode for you. But Ron, the doctor kind of saving the plane through somehow, like through Ryan connecting his phone. I wasn't a fan. It was too easy. But also, it, it was as if she knew. And quite clearly, now that I think about it, of course she knew, because she's a time traveler. So they probably used time travel to fix it. Or to create a paradox that, of course, then she's able to save the companions from the past. It's happened before. It's just cheap in my mind, especially the way they did it. So, like, mm, I wasn't crazy about how they did it. But what can I do? Honestly, what can I do about it?
I can complain about it. That's about it. I do, I do love that. One, I, I'm curious how the master got his TARDIS. There's a lot about the master that I, I want to get some backstory for this master. And I don't think we're gonna, based on how this episode ended. Uh, spoiler alert. Sorry. This whole thing's a spoiler. So why are you even watching? You shouldn't have even watched the first part like that I was just talking about. Like, come on, guys. Okay. Anywho. Anywho. Get, you guys get it? As Tom Baker would have done. I, I do want background on him. I want to know, like I said last time, like you just said, I want to know how he survived. Also, I want to know how he got his TARDIS. Who did he kill? Let's be real. That's how the master gets anything done is he kills something. But I want to know how that worked. Um, I definitely, going on the master, it's definitely a different master than we got with Cabaldi. This is by far more of the John Sim and David Tennant type master doctor relationship than Gomez Capaldi. I loved Gomez Capaldi. Uh, I didn't mind Sim and Tennant. We'll see what happens with, I, I forget his name already. I didn't, well, I didn't ever actually knew it. And Whitaker. Um, it'll be interesting to see. I, I, it'll be interesting to see. Hopefully it's... This definitely seems more vengeful, angry master than hoo crazy, but I'm still your oldest friend and best friend ever. I think part of that was also just jealousy, but that's me. Um, so based on the master's reaction at that one point when he was like, doctor, how the fuck did you get here? And the doctor picked up right with me like, huh? So you have no control over them. But out of that scene, we were finally got to find out what this new race is called. The Kasav Kasarvin. Kasavin. Kasarvin. One of those two. I don't know yet. I'm probably going to look it up later. I'll probably put some text or something and probably make fun of myself knowing me because I do that. But that being said, um, so yeah, they're, they're around, uh, like, like I kind of said earlier, I like that Chibnall's doing a lot of new races, new aliens. It's kind of dope. Yeah. I, I just, it's not like one like they did last season. So we're, we're already, we got a new one already, but we also have some old. So I'm thinking, I, I, I got a good feeling. Got a good feeling about these people so far. Um, And I also want to talk about one thing. And this also ties to Daniel Barton. I'm getting major Cyberman vibes. And I think it might have, I don't know. I kind of would have loved to see Daniel Barton as type of a cyber creator. Like, I think Dan that could have been a real pro for Daniel Barton because he talks about technology. It, it, it makes sense. He'd fit the character pretty well, but we didn't get it. Um, that being said, the Kasarvan also gave me cyber vibes. Because if you remember from the, the uh, Cue the Waterworks episodes with Rose Tyler dialing. Excuse me. <laughs> it, it, you know what? That, that season still, or that episode still makes me emotional. Just seeing him up against the wall. Being like. It hits. It hits hard, man. One one thing I didn't really get, and I, I, I did eventually understand, because they had to introduce two people, but the cat and mouse game the Doctor and Master were playing, in my opinion, felt like a waste. It, it, it could have been faster or just not existed, but as we found out, it needed to exist because they, got to, they had to introduce... These two incredibly important women to the creations of the computer that end up are the ones that actually helped the doctor save the day, which was awesome. It really was. I enjoyed it. I think this was a better way of handling the history lessons that Chibnall wants to do. The way he did it last season was where this was different. And I feel like it was done correctly this time. So, yeah. So Doctor Who's like Star Wars now. What what is with all this re introducing new powers? Like, mm -hmm. so so this is just like how uh, Baby Yoda and then 
Ray was able to force heal people. Oh, the the mind tele the telekinesis conversations with the master. That is new. I am not a fan because literally in the previous episode she wasn't able to understand. You couldn't. She couldn't tell it was the doctor, and now she can mind conversations with him. Come on, come on, man. And on that note, they added a second thing, which is that she can now wipe memories. Huh? That was the whole thing. Is that the doctor didn't do that? but instead became the silent hero that everybody always knew about. But they never wiped their memories about it, mostly because they knew no one would ever believe them. So I don't understand the need here to just have her r erase these two minds. I mean, okay, I kind of get it, because she didn't want to disrupt history and, and computers. She could have just erased that little part. She didn't have to erase the fact that she existed to them. Like that? Why? Why? I, I don't get it. I don't... Mm. You're infuriating sometimes, Chibnall. You really are. You have these great highs, and then you just... Ugh. Your lows are really low, not like highs to mediums. You know? Highs to mediums, my man! But, ugh. Like, come on, man. I... Uh, I guess I'll just go back to the one good thing that has happened in Spyfall is the master. The fact that the master is in the dimension of the Kazavan, Kazarvan, Kazarvan, that's right. Uh, it's great. It's the right move because then you can just pluck him out whenever the fuck you want to bring him back in. It's the right move. It is like this. The dude playing the master right now is doing a great job. He's very angry, which I want. I, I want a lot more of the master. I don't know if we're going to get a lot more of the master, but there's a lot. I, I want to know about this new master. We found out what was up with Missy. Kind of. Mm, not really. But like, I, I want to know. I want to know. One, one final thing I want to talk about. Kind of mentioned it a little bit earlier. The doctor is best when it's dark. And frankly, the fact that the master bombed and went wrecking crew on Gallifrey to create this tension is great. It's wonderful. And he's doing it because he's angry on board with it. And again, I, I mentioned this earlier. I'm still not sure if I'm in on board with this. It was our past isn't our past. They lied to us. Might still piss me off because we're at conning, but could also be a delusion like mind games from the master, which would be fine. So I, I just again, I, I keep coming back to this. I want more of the master this season so that we can understand more of what's going on here. Now, I'm not saying every episode because then that would get boring. It would ruin the master. I don't want him every episode. I want him just, just more than these two episodes. I guess, so we probably got him in the beginning season, then we'll get him at the end. In reality, that probably makes a lot of sense, so, yeah. Um, I know I've been screaming a lot about this episode, but, like, it, and it wasn't actually that bad. It wasn't as great as Spyfall Part 1. Spy par Spyfall Part 1 was much better, because it had the spy influence, it had the Master's Reveal. This episode, it ditched a lot of that and felt like a re reverting back to the previous season. And I'm, I'm really, if that's how these two parts are going to be, I might not be on board with this anymore. I don't know. But again, we're two episodes out of 12. Things might change, hopefully. So on that note, I think I'm going to bid you guys farewell. I got to go hop in my TARDIS, go review a couple other shows that you'll see eventually. So uh, till next time, my Whovians. Peace out. Oh, by the way, still here? Good. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell, please. Because speaking for myself, I got a lot of content coming out. Eric's got a lot of content coming out. We And Byte in general has a lot of content coming out. We disappeared a lot last year, but that was because we were planning and doing new things that are coming out this year. So you better be subscribed. You better have the ring, the bell rung so you get our notifications when the new stuff comes out. Because 
I'm going to be honest, we're all really excited about it. And I'm not going to tell you anything because I ain't going to spoil it. So do me the favor of like if you like this, dislike if you didn't. If you didn't, let me know what you think I should do differently or what your opinions are that differ to mine. And then hit the bell. Ding, ding. Peace out, my Whovians.